Well, hey guys, Stephen here with Four Oaks Crafts, and I got another video on wood turning for you today, another project for your kitchen. I'm gonna be showing you how to make a bottle stopper on the wood lathe. Turning a bottle stopper is a very satisfying project, and they're fairly easy to make on the wood lathe. The design possibilities are huge when you consider wood selections and shapes. So join with me, and I'll show you how to make it. Let's get started. Okay, the first step in making a bottle stopper is I'm gonna to need to drill a hole uh, in my blank. I'm gonna use a piece of uh, zebra wood uh, blank. It's uh, very hard wood and it's gonna be good to uh, tap into. I like to use um, these metal bottle stoppers and you notice they have a thread on the end of them. So eventually I'm gonna to need to thread this into the wood and need it to hold uh, the threads real well. Now this particular uh, bottle stopper uh, is a cone-shaped one. You can get these in a lot of different shapes and varieties. This one's a titanium-coated uh, uh, bottle stopper. Um, you can get uh, chrome bottle stoppers and you can get stainless steel. I would tend to, to stick toward the stainless steel variety or maybe the titanium. I think they will last longer over time and not uh, corrode. But in order to uh, attach this to the blank, uh, I'm going to need to uh, drill a uh, 5 16 I got, I'm using a 5 16 uh, drill bit. And this comes with a kit, by the way. I recommend that you purchase all this bottle stopper stuff together uh, from the same supplier. But my kit uh, comes with a 5 16 bit. And we're going to drill down a portion of the way into the blank. And after I do that, I'm going to use the bottle stopper uh, tap, and that's what I got in my hand here. It's a 3 8 by 16 TPI tap, and here's a picture of the box. Just happened to have come with the drill bit as well. So we're going to drill with the 5 16 uh, bit down into the blank, and then we're going to tap. We're going to put threads in that hole so that the blank can receive the uh, bottle stopper. One other thing I want to go ahead and talk about is how do you hold the blank on the lathe. So there's a couple ways, maybe two or three different ways you can do this. I'm going to use a, uh, a bottle stopper uh, screw chuck and this is going to fit onto my headstock. Uh, it's a one inch by eight TPI. Uh, threaded attachment and it's the uh, blank is going to screw onto this and notice this collar here this co the, the diameter of this uh, collar or if you want to call it a bushing uh, corresponds to the same diameter as the uh, bottle stopper so when I turn this down and, and sand the blank it uh, fits perfectly with the bottle stopper itself. And here's a picture of the container of the bottle stopper chuck. Again, this is one inch by eight TPI. It's going to screw on to the headstock of my uh, blade. And another way you can do this is you can use a Jacobs uh, chuck. And you can buy the, the mandrel uh, separately. Uh, you can buy these. Make sure that they go with the bottle stopper kits that you buy and make sure that this uh, bushing here or collar matches the bottle stoppers. So you put this in your Jacob's Chuck and tighten it down and then just slide this into your uh, Morse taper on the, the head stop. Alright so let's go ahead and we're going to take this over to the drill press and we're going to put a center mark on this and we're going to drill the hole for the bottle stopper. So okay, here we go. We're fixing to drill into the uh, bottle stopper blank using the 5 16 drill bit. And I'm using my centering vise here. I've already got the centering vise lined up with the, the drill press here. And I don't really have to mark the center. It's already going to be centered when I come down and drill the hole. And you notice I've got a piece of blue tape attached here to tell me you know, how far I want to drill this hole into the blank. 
And the way I gauge that distance is I wanted to go a little bit beyond the distance of this uh, threaded tap here is that I don't want this to just bottle, bottom out too soon while I'm tapping into the uh, blank and mess up the threads. All right, now that we've got our 5 16th uh, drill hole here, uh, we're gonna use the tap, go ahead and put some threads. We're gonna try to go in as straight as possible. Just take this real slow. Just keep going, this does take a while, but it's uh, worth it to get it right. Okay, you just want to keep going until it just bottoms out. Once it bottoms out, you don't want to force force the tap anymore because you might mess up the, the thread. So, should be good. All right, now we're going to test this and screw the, uh, the uh, bottle stopper chuck into the blank. Just keep screwing that in and get it nice. Nice and snug. And there we go, we're ready to put this on the lathe. Now I've already pretty much trued up the uh, end here with the uh, uh, miter saw, because when I put this bottle stopper on here, I want it to be uh, flush so that there's no gaps between the wood and the bottle stopper. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put the, um, the bottle stopper chuck onto the headstock and it just simply screws on the threads here get that on there nice and snug and now i'm going to uh, be turning this i need to turn this block of wood into a cylinder and then we can start to shape it but to do that i'm going to turn we're going to bring the tail stock up in the live uh, center taper here we're going to lock that down and we're going to turn between centers to start with Okay, I'm gonna to have to get this block down to a cylinder. So to start with, I'm just gonna use my uh, roughing gouge to do that. I'm gonna have the lathe on about 1800 RPMs. I got my safety glasses and safety equipment all on, so let's get started. I like to use my finger under here uh, the uh, the gouge and kind of keep a, an equal distance here as I bring this along the tool rest and that just kind of helps uh, give me a uniform cut across the blank rest the chisel on top of there if it doesn't chatter a lot and it may be all the way yep it's pretty much all the way around now all right, for the next set of cuts, is I'm going to try to start shaping the bottle stopper, I'm going to use a 3 8 of an inch uh, spindle gouge.
Okay, now I'm going to remove the uh, move the tail stock back. Move our wrist around a little bit here. Try to finish the the end of the bottle stopper. All right, now we're gonna get it to the shape we want it. We're gonna go ahead and do some sanding. I'm gonna start with 120 grit, then move to about 220 grit, and then uh, say 400, 500 grit sandpaper. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, sanding. I normally like what, what I like to do is use some kind of walnut oil, <clears throat> but I didn't have walnut oil. I do have some of this uh, I do have some of this cutting board uh, mineral oil, and I like to put that on the sandpaper while I'm sanding. It just helps lubricate it a little bit better, and it keeps down on the dust. Run the sandpaper lengthwise a little bit here to get uh, some of the sanding marks out. Okay, now I'm going to move on to some uh, wet dry sandpaper to get some finer grits. And I saw somebody the other day doing this on another YouTube channel. I thought it was a cool idea. So I took uh, all of my different uh, grits so I've got and I stapled them together. So you can see they're all stapled together here. So I've got 500 grit, I've got 1,000, I've got 1,500, and then the final one is uh, 2,000 grit. So all I got to do is go down in that order, tearing off a little piece as I go, and I know I'm getting into finer, you know, I'm getting into finer and finer grits. So I'm going to continue to use the mineral oil as I do this, and hopefully that'll keep down on the dust. Okay, I'm going to use the uh, Doctor's uh, Woodshop Pins Plus friction polish on the bottle stopper. I use this a lot on my wooden pins and it seems to work well. It's got a mixture of, uh, let's see, what does it say here? It's got a mixture of walnut oil, shellac, denatured alcohol, and some syn synthetic wax in here. And what this does is when I put this on here and then I apply the paper towel uh, with the friction, it uh, helps to set up the uh, finish uh, into the wood and probably going to do, you know, two or three coats of this to get a good uh, finish on here. And what you want to do is spread this all around real good and apply a moderate pressure so the friction it's building up some heat. You might feel a little bit of the heat slightly through the paper towel, but that's okay. You want some heat to make this work. Then I'm going to let this, I'm going to uh, wait for about a minute or two between coats. You can leave the lathe running or you can turn it off. I like to turn it off and inspect from time to time. Okay, I put uh, about four coats of the Pins Plus on here. So now I'm just going to take a clean paper towel and buff it. There we go. Very pleased with the finish. It looks very nice. Some some people like to also put a uh, CA finish on here. I mean, there's other types of finishes, uh, you know, maybe lacquer finishes and that kind of thing that you can use as well. 
Um, but the fr friction polish goes pretty smoothly and uh, pretty easy to put on. And again, I would recommend three or four coats, uh, letting it dry, you know, between coats. All right, all we have left now is to uh, put the wooden bottle stopper and thread it onto the metal part. No gaps around the, where the uh, metal and the wood meet, that's good. Um, some people have asked, you know, do you need to put any glue on the threads? And I think it depends on whether or not how well that threading process went. You know, if the threads for the metal part are uh, kind of loose and you're not sure about that, you know, you might want to put some, uh, some medium CA glue on the threads or some epoxy and screw this in here might help to hold it. But this, uh, this worked pretty well. It's staying pretty, pretty snug on the, um, the wooden blank, a wooden bottle stopper. So I don't think I'm gonna glue it. Well, hey guys, that's a wrap for this video. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of other wood turning videos over on YouTube. I've got a whole series on how to turn wooden pins. So check those out when you get a chance. If you like this video, please uh, comment, leave a comment, please like it, and please subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.